Today we have Ali and Subham. Hi guys. Hey everyone. So now the the Trinity of Atheist Republic is complete because now we have Ali who is ex-Christian, Subham who is ex-Hindu atheist, and myself who I'm an ex-Muslim atheist. This is perfect. So we're basically covering all of the world's major religion. The only thing that I was missing is an ex-Jewish atheist host. And then we will be complete. But right now we're covering the ma world's major religion. So that's pretty good already. But what, guys, should we have a fourth co-host at some point to cover every religion? What do you guys think? That'd be neat, that would be I cool. think. Uh, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I okay. mean, it would be great. Yeah, that would be cool. All right. So should we just jump into the news? Yeah, let's just jump into the news. Uh, for number one, our location is out of Morocco. Three jihadists who beheaded two female Scandinavian hikers in Morocco are sentenced to death after pleading for forgiveness from Allah as a judge declares them human beasts. Okay, so it wasn't just three men. Uh, it was actually 23 men, and they weren't all from Morocco. Some of them were like... Um, uh, I, I, think I, I think just one was non-Moroccan. He was... Switzerland. There, were, there, from were, Switzerland, like. there were three, I thought, that were not from Morocco. Uh, wait, so uh, these are... Well, who cares? Uh, so, <laughs> so get, before, we'll get before we comment on it, can we just understand, what, give, get a general understanding on what's going on? Like, so these people... Yeah, yeah okay, okay. So, uh, so there are 23 men um, who are all sentenced for this in one way or another, but the court saw that four men were ultimately responsible for these two uh, hikers' deaths. One was 28, one was 24. They were both women um, visiting Morocco and going on a hike. Um, so, yeah, so, so four of them were tried with harsher sentences. Three of them were sentenced to death by firing squad. One of them uh, it was recommended that he got a life sentence. And then the rest of the men, they recommended uh, sentences between 15 years to life for their involvement in this. But the, the three to four that were judged harsher, they actually on, on a video where they recorded beheading these girls, uh, pledged their allegiance to ISIS. So this is this was so, ISIS uh, in Morocco. J just to, just to make it clear to a lot of people, a lot of people are like, oh, why did these uh, Scandinavian women? Why did they went to Morocco? Uh, if they, it's their fault. Uh, Morocco is generally very safe. This was a very rare situation for Morocco. Like Morocco doesn't have an ISIS problem. Uh, this was they right. got they just got these two women got really unlucky, right? Yeah, yeah. I think there was this uh, guy. Swish, he was Swish, Kevin. Uh, he was the one who taught them how to use weapons and encrypted messaging. So, uh, he was also, I think he was sentenced to some punishment. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but uh, they're saying that he you know, cut off ties with other people uh, after learning that they have extremist views. So, uh, I mean, uh, so is you're saying this is not common, but... Uh, for such a not common thing, I think uh, this is quite a large group of people to have such extremists. Like they just take two girls uh, and just Where, kill in Morocco? them. Morocco? Yeah, I mean this, this, this very group. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just yeah. saying beheadings by ISIS in Morocco is not something. Yeah. It's not as common in like well as like Syria or Iraq or example, uh, yeah, or course. in Somalia or in. You know other places like this is like Morocco is a very touristy place and generally people feel safe there um, and but but Chris pointed pointed in the left chat the beheadings happened a while ago the reason why this is on the news right now is because of these death sentences that, uh, that the sentencing just recently happened by Morocco's government so not so 23 of them got arrested but yeah, appeared in court but only four of them got the firing squad um, so right, because those are the three who admitted to actually killing, um, killing the girls. Right. Um, so th this is so. Here's the thing: Do you guys agree with the capital punishment? Do you think like because a lot of people think that? I saw all most of the comments online. There were people were very happy about this. I honestly don't know if you're part of ISIS. I don't think being executed is that much of a deterrent like I don't really know 
What do you guys think? Like, I know, Ali, you're very passionately against capital punishment, right? Outrageously passionate against it, especially uh, in America, where it costs more to sentence someone to death than it is to keep them in jail for life. So the, the and, and we have, we know for a fact that death is not a deterrent. So if it's not a deterrent, it's not going to help future justice of a case it's not like someone's gonna be like oh well i don't want to i don't want to die so i'm not going to murder this person it that doesn't deter someone if someone wants to murder someone they're going to murder someone so it's it's not like we're um this is justified in any way in my opinion so no i'm i'm absolutely anti-capital punishment yeah i I agree with ellie i mean before i used to be pro-capital punishment for some cases means most extreme cases but now i think that i mean even if you kill that person, even if you end their life, it is not like there won't be any future criminals. I mean, it won't stop the crime. Mm. It will just end some lives and so, it will be over. So a lot but of people are I don't think, think it should be it's very capital punishment. It's, it's very interesting because mm-hmm. a lot of people say, I'm usually against capital punishment, but in this case, this, this, this crime was so bad that in this case, I make an exception. But I think the people that say that, they misunderstand the whole point of the justice system. The point of the justice system is not to satisfy people's desire for revenge, right? The point of yeah. justice system is to prevent future harm. Okay, so they're not going to like it should be at least the most effective justice system. Justice, if justice system is just trying to listen to the people and mob, look at the mob and what the mob wants, uh, it's not going to be as effective to the society and as beneficial to the society that the justice system is not really focusing on what people demanding, but more focusing on studies and research that shows if we do this punishment, it's less likely that this crime is going to happen in the future. Right. So. It doesn't matter how intense the crime is or what the crime is. If you want these things to happen less, people's anger doesn't matter. Future preventing future harm should be the case. And then in that, and if if preventing future harm is the goal, then our passion, passionate hate for a certain group of people is irrelevant. What data shows and what science shows and our opinions becomes irrelevant. We have to really follow the evidence. If evidence says like, you know, this this is more effect rehab is more effective than punishment, we go with punishment. Even if we go even if we go for capital punishment, like I I, I would go for capital punishment if we have actual data that shows that capital punishment is the best way to prevent future like yeah, we're killing one person, but killing one person if it could save killing, you know, hundreds of other people from dying, I would have been for capital punishment if data actually showed that. But data doesn't show that, right? So the the yeah. whole point should be preventing future harm, not to like people like, oh, I hate these people. I I hope they die in misery and they get tortured or something. Well, if that that just if that's what you're trying to get out of it, then that does. The only thing you would get at is just a sense of satisfaction that these people got what they deserve. But it, the more important thing is how can we avoid other people from being harmed? Is that is, do you guys agree with that? Yes. I mean, even if you kill them, if, uh, it's not like it's going to bring the two hikers back. Hmm. I mean, they will stay there. So See, just faith- uh, killing a few other people won't make it right. See, on, on Facebook, yeah. somebody is saying they deserve death. See, again, but what they deserve is irrelevant. What we are trying to figure out is what is the action that the justice system could take that will prevent future harm? That's the real question. Do you guys agree? Yeah, I think I think you guys agree. Uh, by the way, they, somebody mentioned that this would be a game changer for Morocco because Morocco hasn't executed anybody since 1993. So they must, I think Morocco is mostly thinking about its tourists, especially because I don't think this would have gotten, these are, these women were from Norway, right? Yeah, they're Norwegian. Norwegian. So I don't think this story would have gotten any attention if this was like other Moroccans being beheaded, right? And I think what they, what they (laughs) also are trying to do, and I'm guessing here, what they're also trying to do is they're trying to save their tourist industry. Morocco heavily relies on its tourist industry. And I think they just is for them is also trying to really send out a message to the world. Like we're so anti this, like we look, we're executing these people. Right. 
So I think it's also a PR thing for Morocco, this whole execution thing. But I'm not sure. And the top comment is saying, Ant uh, is from Anthony, is saying, this is why I wish we brought back public executions. Draw. Oh my god. Okay, we already responded to this. Uh, the second top comment is saying they don't give a damn about people's families or of their victims pleading for forgiveness oh yeah we forgot to mention this the title oh, says yeah. that they they ask for forgiveness from Allah and only Allah it means refusal to apologize so a lot of people think that these people when they ask forgiveness for Allah that means they regret their I don't know if they regret what they did but they don't know asking forgiveness from Allah is just a common thing you always say right and it's also a sa a sa it's not like oh we're so sorry we beheaded these people God forgive us no basically the message is like we don't need forgiveness from our, the, everybody is a sinner and the only per the, the message that they're sending I think is that we don't ask for forgiveness from the court or the family there's only one person that we care about and that's God and that's the only person we ask forgiveness from Allah is the only person that only uh, entity we ask forgiveness for and nothing else is relevant they're not saying that we did something wrong they're just saying that they're just saying defi standing defiant in the face of death and they say we don't need your we don't need to apologize we don't need you your forgiveness o only God could give us forgiveness and they're not for asking for when they ask for forgiveness from God they're not really asking forgiveness for this they're asking forgiveness for all their sins because everybody's a sinner in their in their mind uh, somebody so, and also yeah. someone asked about the family the victim's family uh, the family declined to take part in the trial oh okay. well um, so, so, so Somebody in the live chat is saying, if a team of psych uh, psychologists says that they are uh, rehabilitated after, let's say, eight years of therapy, should they be free then? So, see, this is, it's not about them being, you know, completely, you know, cured or something. If the, if the process of freeing, even if they go through rehab, if you could show data that by freeing them, other people will be more motivated to now commit crimes, then no, you shouldn't be freeing them, right? Even if they're completely cured and completely like, oh, we went through a rehab and now we're okay. If, you, if, if they don't even get a jail sentence, then I'm, I think, and I don't know, I haven't seen the data, then they, 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 they tell my show, like people will say, well, I'm gonna go kill whoever I want and come out of the prison eight, eight years from now. It's you know then I think that might encourage more crime again I don't know what the data is but we have to go by the data it's not about what what people deserve it's about preventing future harm atheists are under attack in many places if they were Christians their voices would be heard if they were Jews their voices would be heard if they were Muslims their voices would be heard but they are atheists and not many seem to be listening let's make it difficult for them to ignore us we have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.